I'm Paul Nguyen from Blue Hour Photo Ventures, and I'm going to show you how I used Sun Surveyor installed in my smartphone to help me photograph the sun rising through this dead oak tree at Driftwood Beach on Jekyll Island, Georgia. You can apply these same methods to help you with your sunrise shoots. I primarily used the map module, the live view module, and the location tool. If you need additional help understanding these modules or the basic functions of Sun Surveyor, such as calibration, I have separate tutorials on those that you should also watch. This was an actual screen recording that I made on location at Driftwood Beach as I was preparing for the shot. Just ignore this little paintbrush icon that appears throughout the recording. This is just part of my screen recording app. When I opened Sun Surveyor from my phone's home screen, it went right to the 3D Compass because that's the module that I used the last time Sun Surveyor was open. One thing that's very important is that every time you launch Sun Surveyor, especially in a new location or having not used it for a little while, you should calibrate the compass. So that's what I did first. I just confirmed that the sensor accuracy was high, and then I could move ahead with using the app. The next thing I did was establish my location. It's easiest to verify your location in map view, so that's what I switched to. In order to be able to load maps when you're out in the field, you'll need cellular data service. The map that was loaded here was my last location, so to enter my new location, I touched the location tool up here in the right corner and chose to establish my location by GPS because I was already at the place where I intended to make my shot. Once my location was found, the map module loaded the new map of where I was, and the location was also updated in my location tool. Seeing these two changes is the easiest way of verifying that the GPS location search worked. If you don't see a new map load or the new map is not the place where you are, you should redo the location search. So now the sun and moon predictions were updated to my new location in all the modules, including the 3D compass, which wasn't the most useful module for this shot because it didn't give me a frame of reference with respect to my immediate surroundings. The map view, or really the most useful tool for general scouting of remote locations, didn't in this case have enough detail. Small landscape features such as trees and boulders are hard to visualize properly from a ground level perspective when using map view. So really the most useful module for this shot was live view, which gave me the immediate frame of reference I needed because it overlays the sun predictions over an actual view of my environment made with my phone's camera. With this view, I was able to see the current position of the sun still below the horizon and its predicted path through the sky and most importantly, how it would interact with the dead tree that was to be my main subject. I swiped through my info panel carousel to get to the sun info panel so I could see what time the sun was due to rise and figure out how much time I had left compared to my current time. And just for my own reference for later on, I followed the path of the sun through the sky to see where it would be in the afternoon and evening. So with regards to the shot I was about to make, I saw that the predicted path of the sun was a bit too far left relative to my subject for my taste, so here you can see me walking 15 steps or so to the right to adjust my position and give me a bit of a different angle, which moved the path of the sun more to the center of my subject. And about 10 minutes later, presto, the resulting shot made with my actual camera, the newly risen sun sitting right in the crook of the tree and creating a nice, subtle little sunburst. And I followed that up with a time-lapse movie. If you have any questions about this shot or this time lapse, or photo tours run by Blue Hour Photo Ventures, email info at bluehourphotoventures.com or visit www.bluehourphotoventures.com.